morning, beautiful people. Hoping this message finds you well. While walking this morning, I was thinking about a word that keeps coming up in conversations about diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. And thought I'd share with you the way that I see it um, and the way that I've experienced it and the way that I understand it. So me being me, we're gonna start with a story about nature. Um, as I'm walking this beautiful trail in, in Georgia. So somewhere in Africa, there is a lion cub right now hiding in the bushes. And he's not hiding in the bushes because he's, he's scared of any other animal. He's hiding in the bushes because what he's doing is, is he's watching the pride over there fight over the latest buffalo kill so you know there's a pecking order the women hunt they eat as fast as they can until the alpha lion or lion show up and then everybody's got to wait till the alpha lion is full and then everybody comes back all the adult females get their scraps and then the cubs go and that cub is watching this and he's been watching this like his whole life up to this point so as he's watching this, he starts to think, I can't wait until I get to eat and be full like everybody else. Now hold on to that, because we'll come back to it. What is your understanding of the concept of privilege? What is privilege? Without looking it up in a dictionary, if you've ever been in my space, you've always heard me say, I need us to stop weaponizing the very things that you want me to be, like accountability. I only hear the word accountable at work when you believe I'm not being that, rather than celebrate when I'm holding myself accountable. Well, what about the word privilege? What is your understanding of the concept of privilege? And when did you start to weaponize it? So let's go back to that lion cub for a minute. That lion cub will grow up and it will be aggressive and it will fight everybody for food. At some point, it is possible that cub will end up being an alpha lion and people will accuse that lion of being a bully. It will accuse it of having privilege when all that lion cub ever wanted was to stop eating last. That's why I identify with the cub. I show up uh, on this video, I arrive at this intersection with you with a ridiculous amount of privilege. I own it, I acknowledge it, and I welcome it. The problem is, it has now been used as a weapon against me. So we will walk around and we will blanketly say things like, privilege is bad. We need people with privilege to stop being a certain way. You know what the problem is, Alonzo? The problem is with privilege. Well, I have it too. And rather than look at the story or the experience of people with privilege, we look at what they have and then say that it's wrong. Like that lion cub, if you know my story and I'm not about to explain it now, it was always about being sick of eating last. So I made it my mission to eat first. That cub made it its mission to eat first. So I'm gonna have a conversation about this word privilege all week, but this is where I'll start. What is your understanding of it? When or how do we stop using it as a weapon? And what can you do to understand the story of a person who arrives at an intersection with you with privilege? That's it. So I hope this message all finds you well and safe and healthy and, and patient and diligent. I hope it finds you understanding the word privilege uh, was not designed to be used as a weapon and how and when and where do you use it that way. Um, and of course, I hope it finds you thinking. I usually end it with that, but I'll also say this just to mess with you a little bit. Um, I can't think of a single person who grew up where I grew up in the conditions that I grew up in that would not make privilege their goal. So when we get it, 
Will you celebrate that? That's it. Talk to you later, everybody. I'm going to go back to this trail. Uh, be safe out there.